It's time for your World Championship of Wrestling main event of the evening. Let's do it! There's a reporter guy out here to see you. <laughs> the, the door was open. They, they said it was okay. I, I, I'm, I'm with the newspaper. Use that. Thanks. What paper did you say you were from? Oh, uh, the, the the banner. And, and thank you for taking the interview. Uh, it, it won't take long. Um, just a couple of questions. Oh, I, I was in the tunnel when you were coming into the ring. And I saw that you, you you got something out of your coat pocket and you looked at it. Uh, it was almost like you were praying. What was that that you uh, you got out of your... Uh... Lint. It was lint. Too much lint on one side and it throws my balance off inside the ring. Huh. Oh, <laughs> Sit down. Let's just get this over with. Go ahead. Oh, oh. 
Oh, thanks. Uh, all right. Uh, do you always do interviews with your face on? I mean, uh, do, you, do you ever take off that makeup? But, well, of course you take off the makeup. I mean, but do, uh, do, do people recognize you when you, you, you know, wash? You here to talk about fashion? You here to talk about wrestling? If you want to talk to Sting, you talk to the paint. Come on now, you you know uh, I didn't mean anything. I just what, did you have a plan or or, or what? No, I, I didn't have a plan. <laughs> it was just a whole lot of one thing leads to another. Huh. You ever been to Cali? Been to L.A. Southern California. Lower Alabama. <laughs> no. I'm talking about beaches. I'm talking about sand. I'm talking about sunshine. Disneyland. Southern California where fun is an art form. My relatives from Nebraska used to say that there was something in the water that makes the people strange. But you know what? I think it's hope. California used to be the land of opportunity before taxes took over. The ad said that Charles Atlas turned from a 90-pound weakling into a he-man admired by all men and loved by all women. When Grandpa grew up, the whole bodybuilder thing just stuck with him. He hung out with all the bodybuilders, he worked out with all the bodybuilders, and he tried to stay in great shape his entire life. My dad, on the other hand, he was a football guy. To be honest, I like soccer and basketball, but my dad, he loved football, so football it was. In my case, it's probably taken longer than it should have. you're invincible heck you know almost everything there is to know at least about girls and cars you find out later that cars you know about girls well that's another story started to look like one of those guys in Granddad's comic book. Yeah, I tried college for a while and I did a lot of different jobs, including bartending and bouncing, but my passion was bodybuilding. I decided I was going to be the next Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, he was Mr. Universe before he was governor. Did you see him in the movie Conan? 
He didn't get that movie because he had a way with words. They say even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. I happen to be at the right place at the right time because I was approached by a buddy of mine who asked me if I wanted to be a partner in a health club with him. Terry comes into the gym for a workout. Some of my staff started freaking out. You see, Terry was Hulk. Hulk Hogan, the king of professional wrestling. I had no idea that our paths would cross again in the future. This guy named Rick Bassman comes walking in and he's got three big guys with him. They're looking for a fourth guy because they want to break into the pro wrestling world with Rick as the manager. Well, they hit on me for two or three weeks and I kept saying no. And then finally, I said, why not? Lock it in. Uh, Wrench it on. Let me see some pain. Uh, no, 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 you moron. I don't believe you're in any pain. <laughs> this gentleman, <laughs> shut up, I'm talking. This is pain. This. You'll make him believe. And you got to make him believe. Get in the ring. Put your wine in. You gotta make him believe that the ballet is real. Like you're near death. Something's about to snap, and they wanna hear it. Your body has to tell the story. Your mouth has to tell the story. But more importantly than anything, your eyes must tell the story. You gotta make him believe the unbelievable. Or if you don't, Doomed to the land of the pancake slug. What's a pancake slug, you might ask? <laughs> that gentleman is a pancake slug. Any questions? Good job. <laughs> well, you think this is funny? No, sir. Think you can take me? I think you just need your butt kicked. What would happen if someone just drop kicked you right upside your head? Oh, well, it's fake. Is that so, Mr. Smart Boy? It's not fake until I teach you. It's not real. Joey, you two grab a board. <laughs> Any questions, pretty boy? I learned a lot from that old boy. Have you ever done something just, like, plain crazy? Crazy? Crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, Rick had decided we needed to look the part for this little field trip to the big game, so the four of us bought a ticket and strolled into a packed-out arena wearing bright blue spandex. What happened next is beyond explanation. The first big time wrestling event I had ever been to, we walked right into Hulkamania. As it turned out, Rick was onto something. We were mobbed, signing autographs and the whole deal. I guess this is one time where spandex and muscles made the man. We got some photos made in our spandex tights and then we sent them to every wrestling promoter in America. Those pictures of the four guys in the bright blue spandex got the attention of one Mr. Jarrett, a promoter from the Mid-South region. He said he liked the looks of the two big guys on the left of the picture. Now that was me and Helwig. Helwig eventually became the ultimate warrior. He was a bodybuilder who won the Mr. Georgia contest. He also studied to be a chiropractor, which came in handy in our new line of work. Mr. Jarrett asked us if we had a car. I said, yes, and he said, good, because you're going to need it. I 
guess that southern accent must have hypnotized me. Up until then, I thought I was a fairly intelligent man. idea how big this country is until you drive non-stop. So I guess you could say the Hulkster saved me from a life as a health club professional. <laughs> so, uh, there you are. You, you're now in the glamorous world of professional wrestling. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, glamorous. When you're in the business of having big muscles, you need protein. There's nothing like a cold glass of orange juice blended with tuna to make you really understand the good life. Brother, can you say amen? Amen. 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 Brother, can you say amen? Amen. When the devil try to come to town, he gonna try and drag you down when it comes around. You know it drags you down. Well, it was an eye-opener. Culture shock. I left beautiful Southern California and went down to the middle of the South. The way of life was completely different, especially on the road. In those days, we were traveling two or three hundred miles one way every single day of the year. We did a lot of wrestling and a lot of driving. Amen. Amen. Brother, can you say amen? Amen. 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 Brother, can you say amen? Amen. Now, the one thing I know is true. The good Lord waiting on you. What you gonna do? And don't you be no fool. You gotta make this understood, act like you should, just like a good Lord would. You best take my advice, don't even think about it twice, take my advice, that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brother, can you say amen? Amen. 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 Brother, can you say amen? Amen. We were only making 25 to 50 bucks a night. I just slept in my car sometimes so I could eat the next day and have enough money to call my girl in California. Hey, baby. How are you? Hmm. I don't know where we are. It ain't California, though. <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard from her forever. <laughs> that wig. Yeah, he's in the men's room. He's a braver man than me. 
Yeah, there's something growing on the walls in there I can't even describe. Hmm. Well, tell them hi. Okay, but I need to go find a tree. <laughs> okay. I love you too. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Show me your tree. Hello, Memphis, and welcome to Mid Southern Wrestling. Tonight, we see the debut of the tag team everyone is talking about. None other than the muscle men from the West Coast, Flash Gordon and Jim Justice, the Freedom Fighters. Mm -mm -mm. My boys are going to mess you up so bad. <laughs> So he was a 285 pounder from Georgia and I was a 260 pounder from Venice Beach and together I guess we were 500 plus pounds of wrestling fury. Oh boy, man. What a great way to start out, huh? I guess everybody was really into Sting, huh? No, no, not yet. Because Sting wasn't here yet. No. I was still Flash Borden. That's the way I started my wrestling career. Flash. <laughs> and there wasn't anything flashy about me or my partner. We were we were pretty green, pretty bad. We had reputations for hurting other wrestlers in the ring. It was pretty bad. Now, wait a minute. If if you were there, then then Sting had to be there. I mean, am I missing something here? Yeah, you are. You're missing two years. You're missing two years of me sleeping in my car, uh, bad payoffs dressing in dressing rooms that were actually made for livestock. <laughs> ah, so the truth is, you really didn't have much of a personal life, huh? Mm. Oh, man, come on. That, all those women screaming your name every night. Now, the readers want to know, was there somebody special? Yeah, one. Her name was Sue, and she was so special, I... I had to marry her. If I were the sun way up there, I'd glow with love most everywhere. I'll be the moon when the sun go down, just to 
let you know that I'm still around. 